Starting with the great name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. Myself, Atisham Amid, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Computer Nautic Zone, for another exciting lecture. In today's lecture, I shall be discussing about various issues regarding internet safety. So let's start and discuss our topic in detail. As we all know that internet can be a very dangerous place for everyone because there are so many cyber predators out there who will hunt you through online hazards and that could cause you or it has a bitter consequences. People they use social media rigorously and they are exposing not only exposing uh, their personal data because as and they are also exposing their families to internet threats for example if you accidentally download downloaded malware that could give cyber criminal access to your computers so in this lecture we are going to discuss that what are the major issues regarding internet safety and how we can overcome those issues so in short we are going to discuss about issues and their solutions now phishing phishing is a use of emails you know try to trick the people into clicking a malicious links or attachments this is a phishing for example if someone send you an email with and having a you know uh, attachment or any link and if you click on that link uh, then people will get access to your data so for example there you you may get an email for example like hey thought you might like this this could be the caption and then there shall be a uh, some picture out there or attachment or any uh, thing that uh, that could appeal you and when you're going to click on that link then um, you are gone and then your data will be accessed uh, by the uh, by the hacker or attachment so that means that if you someone send you an email and uh, if some person is unknown to you and uh, if he or she is trying to uh, you know uh, persuade you to click on that link so better to ignore it or delete it so this can also be done to social media apps or other messaging apps uh, uh, which is called smishing second is cyber bullying cyber bullying is a bully means a bullying a person uh, with the use of digital technologies uh, you know social media uh, digital technologies that we have is facebook instagram snapchat or other social media uh, you know applications uh, instant messaging direct messaging and online chatting on internet and emails uh, these are done and it is cyber bullying is also done uh, in online forums in chat rooms message boards such as reddit uh, what are the examples of cyber bullying cyber bullying is means um, spreading lies about someone or posting embarrassing photos or data about of someone on social media um, sending hurtful messages or threats through messaging platforms this is also cyber bullying or impersonating someone uh, you know creating creation of fake ids or or something like that and send mess mean messages to other on their behalf so these are the examples of cyber bullying if someone is uh, cyber bullying you or if someone is uh, you know posting embarrassing photos of you or embarrassing data or someone is sending a hurtful messages or impersonating uh, and doing impersonating things then better to uh, not ignore it and report it to the law enforcement agencies uh, because there is a law in every country regarding cyber bullying almost second third then we have is a spyware spyware is a type of malicious software that is installed in a computer devices without end user knowledge user doesn't know that there is a uh, no malicious software is installed and with the help of that uh, software malicious software uh, use the hacker will access to your data so what the hackers do by installing a spyware into your computers it invades the devices steals your sensitive information and uh, regarding your uh, data usage or and then send those data to uh, data to the advertisers data firms and external users 
how we can know that this is a spyware or not uh, so this is a general question that mostly students ask that uh, um, how we can tell that this is a spyware or something like that so any software that can be classified as software if it is downloaded without the user authorization if any software that is installed into your system and uh, without your consent then this is a simple spyware spyware is controversial because it can violate the end user privacy and has potential to be uh, abused so people must not allow someone to download softwares without their consent so you may next we have is cookies cookies are basically your text files with a small piece of data like username and password that are used to identify your computers as you use uh, a computer network http cookies are used to identify specific users and to improve your web browsing experience you are using your browsers and um, you know you are using a gmail facebook instagram or any other thing a uh, social media platform by using a browsers you uh, mostly save your passwords and username or as well as your history as well in the browser so what these companies do they just uh, uh, you know reach out to your cookies and and um, identify your patterns your searching patterns your watching patterns and which on your and based on these patterns uh, they are uh, going to um, help you out and they improve your web browsing experience so data stored in cookies uh, is created by the server upon your connection uh, and unique id is given to you and your computer viruses viruses are a malicious piece of software code that is designed to spread from device to device and uh, how viruses spread viruses need host um, one must clear this concept that virus does not uh, you know spread by its own it needs a host to um, to to spread and how it spreads is to spread to email attachments or external storage devices usb or flash drive if you uh, if you have if your virus if your usb or a flash drive is corrupt or it is infected by the by the by the, by the virus and you just insert that uh, infected usb or a flash drive into your computer then your com then this virus will be uh, transferred into your uh, computer and it will affect you uh, to it will affect you then so it means that virus does not spread of its own it need a host to to uh, to spread so how will how will you know that your uh, computer or your personal computer or your laptop or mobile phones is infected by the virus what are the symptoms of that so your computer may be infected if you recognize of these malware symptoms if your computer performance becomes slow or uh, if you if your uh, processing becomes slow then that means that there there could be a virus in your pc and uh, if you have unexplained data loss or frequent uh, system computer crashes uh, especially your windows operating system if your windows uh, you know mm, corrupts uh, becomes crashes uh, occasionally uh, without any reason uh, then um, you must know that there could be a virus into your computer and uh, you need to mitigate uh, you need to mitigate or you need to eradicate that uh, computer virus so how the computer virus can be removed as simple as that you need to install antivirus uh, mostly windows 10 or something windows like that there is a windows 8 or windows 10 where you will get um, a free install uh, antivirus in the form of windows defender or uh, you can get avast avg so these are the antiviruses uh, so you must run your uh, antivirus uh, you know clean your computer daily or twice or twice in the week so this practice uh, should be done uh, in order to uh, get uh, get rid of viruses cyber crime cyber crime is a criminal activity that either targets a user or a computer network or network device so what are the types of cyber crime cyber crime is email or internet fraud if someone is doing a fraud through email or internet that is a cyber crime or uh, if you are identity fraud if you are impersonating someone 
uh, that is also a uh, cyber crime if you are stealing a personal information and you using that person information without the user consent or without the uh, other person content consent so that is also cyber crime or uh, theft of financial or credit uh, payment data so mostly the banks data is crucial and uh, if you someone is stealing that information uh, that is also a cyber crime so if corporate data is important uh, companies data uh, organizations if someone is uh, stealing or selling the corporate data without uh, you know the consent of the uh, end company then that is also a cyber crime cyber extortion cyber extortion means that uh, you have steal someone's data hackers mostly do uh, they just steal the data and uh, and then demand a money and to uh, and they will again they will uh, put up your deal with you that they are going to uh, give to access to your data only if uh, if you uh, send them money so demanding money to prevent a threat or attack uh, is called uh, cyber extortion and ransomware attacks ransomware attacks are also uh, similar kind where people uh, steal data and then demand uh, money to access that and data identity theft identity theft is a crime of obtaining a personal information or financial information of someone and they use that identity to commit fraud such as making unauthorized transaction or purchases if you have uh, you know impersonating someone and doing uh, transactions over their behalf this is identity theft so how we can prevent that identity theft do not share your personal information like your birthday your social security number your bank account details your family details do not share it on your social media or through online because or if someone is asking you about your uh, information uh, like your uh, birthday your credit card numbers your debit card numbers so information always report it to the uh, concerned law enforcement agencies and do not share inform your information use security features on your phone your phone is your you know sensitive uh, gadget it takes a lots of information about you so better to have a security patterns better to have your your passwords on there uh, better to put on security lock there so so make use of those security features on your phone install antiviruses on your pc and laptop it is always recommended to have a have an antivirus on your pcs or laptop because uh, there could be information uh, there and um, the viruses and worms are there so you can eradicate those, uh, those viruses and worms through your antiviruses so always use a complex password that means always use a special character in your password like dollar sign or those signs um where uh because it is hard to crack these um, soft, these passwords so do not put up simple passwords always use special vectors or uh, similar kind of uh, similar kind of uh, you know characters then we have is spamming spamming is when when someone send an un unwanted email to you. you you know you open up it is always a frustrating uh, when you open up your email and someone is continuously sending you an email without your consent uh, it normally comes uh, in your in your junk mail or your spams so if someone is keep on sending you an email um, this is also um, unwanted information um, that you do not want to watch so the person who companies a company who send unwanted email is called spammer so what are the solution of these issues we have discussed the issues and uh, how we can overcome that uh, these issues and what are the solutions of internet security first of all enforce strong authentication strategies you must use uh, you know different authentication strategies and uh, to enfo and enforce them uh, to make use of uh, your internet security for example you can use a uh, email or you can um, you know two factor authentication is a one of the one of those authentication strategies if someone even gets your password or email 
and then it cannot open without when uh, all you it will all always open uh, when uh, when they will have your mobile phone so always use a two factor authentication because if even if someone gets your email or password um, then they, they do not have access to the code so there's an extra layer of security you must use keep username and password secret from unreliable sources do not share your username and passwords um, to uh, to anyone to unreliable sources it is always important to decide the domain of the user do not give unnecessary access to user um, if you are in corporate or any organization so the rules must be defined and the access of that rules will all should always be given uh, to their concerned uh, domain so ssl certificates should be uh, used to reduce the risk of spoofing in in the greater extent so always uh, recommended to have an antivirus in your pcs um, and get your system clean um, scan on the regular basis a user should increase the password length your password length should be not should not be you know four or five digits or something like that should be a little bit lengthy and it must be a complex uh, like i i have said, I already said before uh, you must use your uh, special characters or uh, any other things okay it must be a mix of that uh, capital letters small letters um, digits special characters it must be a blend of that because it is hard to crack on enable multi factor authentication i've said before keep authoritative and resolve functions separately using different servers it is important to have your backup data and always uh, store data on your reliable medium if you are using better to use a cloud services or any other reliable services to store data update your patches if if there is a loophole in your system then always uh, recommended to have uh, you know identify your loopholes and work on that patches install ssl software to stay ahead of threats it is better to have uh, to have ssl uh, certificates uh, so that uh, you can uh, mitigate and